Hello friends, this video on ratio and proportion part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Unitary method. In unitary method, we always find the value of one unit first and then we find the value of required number of units. Now what do we mean by one unit? Let us take this example. So in the previous case, three books cost was three books cost was given as rupees 50. So three books cost rupees 50. So what we do is first we find the value of one unit so that one unit is one book in this case. So first let us try to find out the cost of one book. The cost of one book would be rupees 50 divided by 3. Why? Because rupees 50 is for three books. So if you divide rupees 50 into three equal parts so each part would be the cost of one book. So one book's cost would be rupees 50. And then we find the value for required number of units. So like in this case, we had to find the cost of 8 books. So if one book costs rupees 50 by 3, so 8 book would be rupees 50 by 3 into 8. So this would be rupees 400 by 3, which is equal to rupees 133.33. So this would be the cost of 8 books. So and this method is called unitary method where you first find out the value for one unit and then you find the value for required number of units. Now if you remember while we were discussing about proportion this is the concept which we had that used like uh, when we were talking about sums like where you have total 50 rupees and you, you want to divide it into two uh, sisters in the ratio of 2 is to 3. So in those kind of problems we were making use of this basic concept only. So let us try another problem. Raju purchases 10 pence for rupees 50. Okay. Manish purchases 7 pence for rupees 84. Can you say who got the pence cheaper? Now see for Raju he purchased 10 pence. And for Manish, he purchased 7 pence. So how are we going to, you know, we just can't compare rupees 150 and rupees 84 because if Raju got 10 pence for this 150. Manish got only 7 pence for this 84. So in order to compare the two, we need to find out the cost of one pen. That is, how much did Raju pay for one pen? How much did Manish pay for one pen? And only then, you know, it will be a fair comparison between the two. So let's do the same thing. So for Raju, cost of 10 pens is rupees 150. So the cost of one pen would be rupees 150 divided by 10. That is equal to rupees 15. Whereas in case of Manish, cost of 7 pens is rupees 84. Therefore, cost of one pen would be rupees 84 divided by 7, which is equal to rupees 12. So now Raju has paid rupees 15 for, for one pen and Manish has paid rupees 12 for one pen. So who got it cheaper? Of course, Manish got it cheaper. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.